Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I'm Justin with Excelsmith. On this episode of Solutions, we'll see how to use wildcards with the filter function. Unfortunately, the filter function can't use wildcards out of the box. However, with some Excel wizardry and the help of two other Excel functions, we'll add wildcard capabilities to the filter function. Let's get started. Our simple data set consists of serial numbers and a value in columns E and F. Our goal is to use the filter function to filter this data based on a value entered in cell C1. First things first, let's build our basic filter equation in cell B4. We start with an equal sign, the word filter, and an open parentheses. The first parameter of the filter function is the range of data we want the equation to filter. For this example, we'll select all of the data in the range E4 through F8. The next parameter tells the filter function which values to include. For the filter function to work, this parameter must contain an expression that evaluates to an array of trues and falses. The filter function returns the values in the first parameter that correspond to the trues in the second parameter. Since we want to filter our dataset based on the serial number, we'll enter the range E4 through E8. Next, we need to compare the values in this range to something in order to return trues and falses. For our equation, we will check if the values in cells E4 through E8 are equal to the value in cell C1. The last parameter tells the filter function what we want returned if there are no true values in the second parameter. In other words, none of the values in cells E4 through E8 are equal to the value in cell C1. For this equation, let's just enter a dash within quotes. We'll close the parentheses and press enter. Our equation returns the dash because none of the values in E4 through E8 equal the empty value in C1. Let's test our equation by copying the value in cell E5 and pasting it into C1. Pressing enter, our equation returns the serial number in cell E5 along with the value in cell F5. Let's try one more. We'll grab the serial number in E6 and paste that into C1. We'll press enter and see that the values in cells B4 and C4 equal the values in cells E6 and F6. So far, our filter function is only returning a single row of data because each serial number in column E is unique. We can see that some of the serial numbers have pieces of the serial number in common. For example, the first and third serial numbers contain the string XYZ. I'd like our filter equation to return all of the rows with a serial number containing XYZ. Let's replace the serial number in cell C1 with the string XYZ. Pressing enter, we get the dash meaning no match is found. This is because there is no serial number in column E that is just the value XYZ. What we need is a way to use wildcards so that we can search our serial numbers based on a piece of text. Let's modify our equation to accomplish this. First, we need to remove the second parameter. We'll select it and delete it. In its place, we're going to use the search function. Search allows us to search for a string within another string. It also allows us to use Excel's wildcard functionality, which we'll get to a little later in the video. The first parameter of search is the value we will be searching for. In our case, that's the value in cell C1. Next, we tell the function where to do the searching. For this, we'll enter our list of serial numbers in the range E4 through E8. Let's close our parentheses and press enter to see what we get. Unfortunately, we get a value error because our equation's not quite finished. Let's take a look at the search function to see what's causing the error. We'll evaluate the search portion of our equation by selecting it and pressing F9. We get an array of numbers and value errors. The numbers in the first and third position of the array correspond to the first and third serial numbers which contain the string XYZ. The number four corresponds to the position within the serial number where XYZ begins. However, our overall equation returns a value error because it has no way to handle the value errors returned by the search function. What we need is a way to return true where there is a number and false where there is an error. We can use the isNumber function to take care of this. Let's press escape to get back to our search function. Before the search function name, we'll enter isNumber. isNumber takes a single parameter and returns a true if the value in that parameter is a number or false if it's not a number. It works with arrays by performing this check for each value in the array. We'll put parentheses on either side of the search function to use it as the parameter for isNumber. Pressing enter, we get something cool. 
we get both serial numbers that contain the letters X, Y, Z, along with their matching values. Let's evaluate the is number portion of our equation to see what's going on. First, we'll select cell B4, then highlight the entire is number function. Press F9 to evaluate this portion of our equation. We get an array of values like when we evaluated the search function. The difference is that instead of numbers and errors, we get an array of trues and falses. The trues correspond to the instances of 4 within the search function, and the falses correspond to the value errors. The filter function can now successfully filter the data in cells E4 through F8, since the second parameter evaluates to an array of trues and falses. Press escape to get back to our equation. We can now have some fun by entering different combinations of characters and returning the corresponding serial numbers and their values. Let's replace XYZ with QWE. After pressing enter, we get the serial numbers and values in rows 7 and 8 of our dataset. If we enter 1, 2, 3, we get the items in rows 4, 6, and 8. Because we are using the search function to perform the string matching, we can take this even further by using Excel's wildcards. Let's enter the value 1, 2, 3, followed by a question mark. This returns any serial number that contains the string 1, 2, 3, followed by at least one additional character. This lines up with the serial number in cell E4. The reason it's not returning the serial numbers in cells E6 or E8 is because those serial numbers don't have a value after the text 1, 2, 3. We can reverse this by putting the question mark before the 1, 2, 3. The equation is now looking for serial numbers that have at least one character before the 1, 2, 3. This returns the serial numbers and values in rows 6 and 8. The serial number in cell E4 is not returned because there isn't any text before the 1, 2, 3. The other wildcard option is the asterisk. This searches for any number of characters. Let's set the search criteria to 15, an asterisk, and then 95. This will look for any serial numbers that have the number 1 followed by 5, then any number of characters, and then the number 9 followed by 5. The serial number in cell E7 matches this criteria. Let's make something really crazy by combining both the asterisk and the question mark. We'll look for serial numbers that have a 1 followed by any number of characters, the letters W and E, then exactly two characters, followed by the number 1. Let's press enter. Well, that wasn't very exciting since the serial number matching this pattern is the same one as the previous example. Let's replace the 1 at the end with a 3. We're now telling the filter function to filter our serial number information based on any serial numbers that have a 1 followed by any number of characters, the letters W and E, then exactly two characters, followed by the number 3. The only serial number matching this pattern is the one in cell E8. As you can see, we can combine characters, asterisks, and question marks to create pretty elaborate search criteria. We could look for email addresses that contain a particular domain or phone numbers with a specific area code. These are just a couple examples, but the possibilities are pretty much limitless. I hope you try this expanded filter equation. It allows you to get really creative with how you filter your data. If you found this video helpful, give those like and subscribe buttons a press. If you want to keep learning more about Excel, and who doesn't, there's some good stuff in that video over there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.